Hey guys, Jason here from Lever Brothers. So I want to do a quick video here to update our breath readings. Last week, the market, I should say the S&P and NASDAQ fell five out of five days. The Russell 2000 fell Monday through Thursday and then bounced a little bit on Friday. Um, but as the week went on, the even though the even though the indexes continued to fall as the week went on, breath actually bottomed on Wednesday and moved up Thursday, Friday, and now it's moving up again today. So as the market was moving down beneath the surface, some stocks were doing, you know, some stocks were firming. Okay, so we can actually look at last week and say Nvidia got crushed, semiconductors got crushed. That caused the entire market to look like it was really weak, but beneath the surface there was some strength brewing. So let's go through some of these. Uh, readings just so you get an idea of what's going on. All right, so here is the NYSE. No, it's the NY, it's a five day moving average in the NYSE down below and the SP 500 up above. Just want to give perspective here. Uh, when the market is trending down, as you can see, you know, over here on the left side of the chart, you get repeated plunges down to a low level here, okay? But when the market is trending up, as you can see on like the you know the right side of the chart, you get almost no plunges over here. Okay, so even if you didn't have access to the S&P 500, all if all you had is access to this indicator, you would know whether the market was moving up or down based on how many and how deep the plunges were into these lower boxes. Okay, so we got a plunge here, but within a relatively short period of time, it recovered. No more plunges, a little dip there, and then we got a plunge last week. So if if we don't get any more plunges here, the market's gonna do just fine, okay? But if we start getting repeated plunges, like, let me delete these. If we start getting repeated plunges, you know, kind of like what we got over here, then we know that there's gonna be more downside, okay? So as of right now, as I'm recording this today, so we got a bounce over here into the weekend. It's kind of hard to see. There were actually two days where it moved up. And now we got a big move up today. You can see the print is up here above 200. So that's great. So if it stays up here, or if we get like some up and down movement over here, the market will do just fine. But if we start getting plunges down below, then we're going to have some more downside to go. All right, a couple more readings with regards to uh, advancers, decliners, and, and such. So this is the up to this SP 500, this is the 10 day moving average of advancers versus total stocks and the 50 day moving average of advancers versus total stocks. What I want to point out first, you can see that, you know, it fell, it fell hard. Um, last week at the beginning of the week, it matched, you know, the 10 day matched, you know, levels from back here, the 50 did not match levels here. So you could actually say like in near in the near term, the market capitulation happened. But backing up capitulation didn't happen on the longer term time frame. But what I also want to point out is on Wednesday, this moved sideways and this moved down a little bit. And then on Thursday, this actually moved up and this moved sideways. So even though the market fell Thursday, Friday, the S&P and NASDAQ, these two prints moved sideways and up. And now we got another update today. So as the market was moving down here, this was starting to firm over here, starting to firm over here. So it was telling us beneath the surface, uh, things were getting less bad. Here's the McClellan, uh, McClellan oscillator, SP 500 versus the McClellan. Same thing happened last week. Even, after, even as the market was falling here, five out of five days for the S&P and NASDAQ, we had a very small down day here, then we had an up day here, and now today we have another up day. So the market was getting less bad beneath the surface even, if the, even as the market was falling. Okay, this is the NYSE um, up volume versus total volume, and the NASDAQ up volume versus total volume. So what we have here is last week was this. Okay, those are all five days of last week. So Monday was a weekday, but then look, even as the market was falling day after day, Tuesday was less bad, Wednesday was less bad, Thursday got above 50%, and then Friday got above 60%. So even though the market fell day after day after day, five-day losing streak for the S&P, the you know volume, the up volume versus down versus total volume was steadily improving. At the Nasdaq, we actually had you know a couple good prints here, right below fifty percent, and then a couple of good prints here above fifty percent. 
Okay, you would never know from this that the market fell, that the Nasdaq fell five out of five days. Okay, so it tells us on the surface the index wasn't doing very well, but beneath the surface, actually, some money was starting to flow into up, up stocks. All right, moving on. Here is the one month high low. Similar breath reading took place here. Market falling day after day after day, but we had an up day. Wednesday, we had a flat reading Thursday, and we had an up Friday, and now today we're up even more. So even though the market fell every day last week, we had three consecutive days where this this reading was either up or sideways, okay? So beneath the surface, things were starting to improve. This is the one-month high-low. Next, this is a three-month high-low. Same thing happened. Um, I know it's kind of hard to read, but we had an up day here, little down tick there but then we had an up move there to a to a higher high and now today we have an even higher print so same thing market's falling but the three month high low was starting to get less bad okay and of course the three month is is three months is not a long time but it's long enough that there were a lot of stocks just sitting right below their three month high low that even though the market was falling they ticked up and boom they're at a three month high low or there are some stocks that just simply refuse to go down further, which is why this indicator moved up. All right, next we have Russell, 3,000 stocks above their 20-day moving average. Okay, similar readings were happening. Right here we have an up day, then we have another up day, and now today we have another up day. So market was down Thursday, Friday last week, and this indicator improved. So even though the market was falling, we had a handful of stocks regain their 20-day moving average. This is the same indicator, except we're using the 50-day moving average. Same thing happened, okay? Market was flat over here, then we moved up, and now we're moving up again. So as the market was falling, we were, it was getting less bad, okay? So overall, market's not in very good shape, okay? And for a lot of reasons, you could believe that the market probably needs to do some more backing and filling and at least take out its low. Um, maybe that'll be a bottom. I don't know. Um, but I can definitely say that in the near term, despite the weakness in the indexes going into last weekend, breath was less bad. Some stocks were regaining some moving averages. Some stocks were, um, a lot of stocks were refusing to move lower. Advanced decline numbers were less bad. Advanced, advancing volume, declining volume was less bad. So beneath the surface, things getting a little bit better. Look for a bottom soon, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, I don't know, but market seems to be building some strength for a bottom uh, that's coming soon. All right, we'll see you next time.